We also saw at Davos um, the exclusion of one country. I mean, pr previously Davos had sort of been a, f a forum for um, we'll, 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 it's criticized as a, as a globalist forum. And, you know, people on the right attacked Klaus Schwab last year for uh, hosting Xi Jinping, the president of China. Previously, Vladimir Putin has addressed the World Economic Forum. Uh, his address at Davos was extremely interesting um, because essentially what he was putting forward was antithetical to the vision of the World Economic Forum in so many ways. And it was very uh, nationalist and very mm -hmm. uh, putting forward a vision of, of state sovereignty. Um, but this year, Russia was excluded in a very public way. Mm -hmm. And you produced a report from a place called the Russian War Crimes House. I want to show, I mean, it was excluded, obviously, as everyone knows, because Russia invaded Ukraine. It launched a military operation inside Ukraine to break NATO control over a country on Russia's border and to support the independence of two breakaway states filled with ethnic Russians who've been under attack by the government inst installed through a U.S. backed coup in 2014 for the last eight years. So, but all this context was left out, and Ukraine was heavily supported at the World Economic Forum. Let's let's look at some of your report from inside the Russian War Crimes House. Is that what it was called? That's what it was. Russian called. War Crimes House, uh, and then you can kind of walk us through what this is about. To save Ukraine, to save my world. I think they are not an ideological movement. They are defenders of a nation. Jeremy Lafredo for Rebel News in Davos, Switzerland, at the third day of the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. While the leader and founder of the forum, Klaus Schwab, said this year's meeting is the most influential and consequential meeting of recent years, one of the most wealthy and influential nations is absent. The theme of our coming together is history at the turning point. Government policies, corporate strategies. We will focus the program mainly on four different areas. First, the war in Ukraine. Russia, whose companies and state leadership, including President Vladimir Putin himself, normally play an integral role here at the Forum, have been disinvited because of the ongoing war with Ukraine. This is really the moment when it is decided whether brute force will rule the world. If so, the force is not interested in our thoughts, and there is no need for further meetings in Davos, as there would be no reason for that. With the U.S. taxpayer sending over $40 billion to the Eastern European nation, Democrats and Republicans alike are feverishly supporting what some are calling, quote, the new current thing. 4,000 miles away from the U.S., here at the Global Elites Retreat, Davos has redone the Russia House, a building historically belonging to the Russian state during the World Economic Forum's annual meetings. This place used to be a Russian house. It was a Russian house for years on each Davos. But this year, Russia is banned for Davos, and that's why we came up with the idea to, to organize the real representative place for Russia. And that's why we created a Russian War Crimes House. The new building is called the Russia War Crimes House and argues that the international community should take more direct action against Russia. The inside of the house is jarring. On a 14 by 10 foot display, giant HD videos depict what seems to be maimed and dead Ukrainians and dilapidated bomb buildings. It's designed to evoke a psychological and emotional response from viewers. The Ukrainian curator of the display is hoping that the political exhibit will provoke the elite in Davos and the wider international community to send more weapons to Ukraine. But it's really very important. Weapons is the first thing that we need to send more. In the back of the exhibit, businessmen and Davos attendees held private conferences that journalists were not allowed into. This highly graphic and controversial plea for weapons shipments and war crime accountability is hardly the doing of a few Ukrainian activists and artists. A small information plaque on the back wall discloses that the organizer of the exhibit is Viktor Pinchuk. According to Forbes, Pinchuk is a Ukrainian oligarch worth $2 billion. 
the curators employed by the oligarch aren't your average progressive political artists. When I asked a curator if he denounced the Azov Battalion, a controversial neo-Nazi contingent of the Ukrainian military receiving U.S. taxpayer-funded weapons, he refused. Instead, he changed the subject and said that the Azov Battalion is incredibly brave and not ideological. I think the Azov Battalion has fought incredibly brave to help Ukraine, to save Ukraine, to save the world. I think they are not an ideological movement. They are defenders of a nation. From Davos, Switzerland, where oligarchs are using art to get weapons, which will be used to fight other oligarchs, Jeremy Lafredo, Rebel News. I, lo- I love the outro. <laughs> the whole thing was so flat, and you even called the Azov Battalion uh, controversial. I mean, it was uh, <laughs> classic newsman style, and then at the yeah. end, you just like drop the bomb. Um, it, 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 this is obscene. So, um, yeah, what were your impressions of the Russian war crimes yeah. house and the overall festival of celebration of Zelensky and the Kiev regime? Yeah, I mean, just just walking around, you know, um, people are wearing two pins. One pin, uh, these are DeVos attendees. One pin is the SDG goals. It's like the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, it's like a, a circular pin with a bunch of colors on it, and that sh- every color represents a different uh, UN Sustainable Development Goal. And um, that's probably every year. They probably wear those every year. And this year, they're wearing that and also a Ukrainian flag. So it just goes to show how, how, um, how front and center uh, Ukraine was in uh, this elite meeting this year. Um, and, this, and what you're showing now, I mean, the, the biggest um, state building in all of Davos was Ukraine, bigger than India, um, bigger than any, any other country was Ukraine. So they're just like, they had an entire block and it used to be a, a casino actually. Um, but which is appropriate. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> um, walking around uh, when you talk to people about how they changed, you know, the Russian house to the Russian war crimes house. Um, the general um, idea is like, Oh, well they, you know, they, they let, they let activists, uh, you know, speak their mind this year. And, um, you know, these are artists and curators and, you know, they're just Ukrainians who are upset with the current state of things and, and they don't like Russia and this and that. And then you look and it's, 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 um, billionaire. It's an, it's funded by Ukrainian oligarch. Like it's just, it's just war propaganda, um, right in the middle of the street, um, it's not, you know, grassroots artists or, uh, you know, uh, political activists. It's all entirely um, astroturfed by this Ukrainian oligarch. And they have that entire uh, screen in there flashing images and sounds of, um, of, of what's going on in Ukraine. And, you know, I felt like I was, I was being like MK Ultra, you know, like when you, kind yeah. of sit in fr- <laughs> you sit in front of a screen for a long enough time, like it changes your, your mood and your attitude. And that, that was that was uh, flashing there. Uh, for a week. And um, you, I even, there was like girls, like uh, Ukrainian girls. I I don't know if they were like, I hate to use the word crisis actors, but like they um, just came here from Ukraine, they said, and they had these signs and had these pamphlets and they said, you know, you need to help us. You need to do this for our country, do that for our country. You need to stop, um, you need to stop dealing with Russian uh, companies. You know, they're trying to really like shut down the Russian economy. And you look at their pamphlets and really small at the bottom of the pamphlet. It's also though these girls are also funded by this Ukrainian oligarch. So it's like and they're not even near the Russian war crimes house. They're just throughout Davos. Um, and they are, you know, wearing with the flag draped around their, their shoulders and they're acting like they um, they are just here on their own um, on their own account. Um, because they, they thought it was so important. And then you look and they're actually backed by a billionaire, the same billionaire that's funding the Russia war crimes house. So it's, it's all very interesting. And the, the real question is why, why is the world economic forum so um, hell bent on raising up Ukraine and, and um, destroying Russia. And because like, you look at the policies that Russia has, you know, put forward, at least during the pandemic, you know, they had mandatory vaccines, they had lockdowns, um, they have smart cities that are engaging with digital identity infrastructure. Like they, they look like they're right on par with what the World Economic Forum wants. But 
At the same time, you have a lot of these Western corporations that are part of the World Economic Forum that don't have as big of a stronghold in Russia as they would like. Um, and I think they just see like regime change in Russia as a way to open up the market uh, once again for Western corporations to loot uh, the Russian economy. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw sort of with on February 24th, the day Russia entered Ukraine on mm -hmm. this military operation, the sanctions that had been prepared for months and years in advance kicked in and the Russian billionaires and multimillionaires the so-called oligarchs. And of course, oligarchs are only Russian. We don't have oligarchs mm. in our country. They're called philanthropists. Mm. Uh, they became the target of these sanctions. You know, Dmitry Firtash, these, uh, Ro Ro Roman Abramovich, he was just drummed out of Chelsea in the UK. I mean, all of a sudden, black masked so-called Antifa protesters showed up at his house. It was all activated. And you saw the program of globalization rapidly break down as mm -hmm. their assets were seized, but basically in violation of all treaties and laws because mm -hmm. they were Russian and they had some connection to the Russian economy. So I think that's what's reflected at the World Economic Forum is that it no longer is uh, a forum for glo promoting globalization as in the past. It's a forum for promoting the West's billionaires and mm -hmm. the West's oligarchs against those who don't go along with the, the dollar or the, the petrodollar. Mm -hmm. Um, we can look at who Victor Pinchuk is. I think it's uh, interesting to look at the partners or illustrative to look at the partners of the Victor Pinchuk Foundation, um, the Clinton Global mm. Initiative. He's very close to the Clintons, uh, has been one of the top, the top donors to the Clinton mm. Global Initiative. The, it, the Atlantic Council is not listed here, but NATO's sort of unofficial think tank in Washington is raked in a lot of money from Pinchuk. You have the European Foundation Center, Yalta European Strategy. I mean, these are these are EU-oriented and NATO-oriented foreign policy think tanks. The Brookings Institution, which is the sort of hub of the foreign policy establishment in Washington. Open Society Foundation. So he's partnering with George Soros, who is kind of an anti-communist hmm billionaire pushing regime change around the world. He just basically called for World War III with Russia. The Aspen Institute, which is kind mm -hmm. of like a U.S. version of the World Economic Forum in Colorado, and so on and so on. And his relationship with Hillary Clinton actually proved problematic during uh, her 2016 campaign. I, I don't know. Now that would be like celebrated, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. But she hosted... Uh, I, I, this is the Kiev Post, so they call a donor a no -nor. Um, <laughs> One, But this was actually originally published in the Wall Street Journal. Hillary hosted a dinner uh, with Viktor Pinchuk. And then, you know, she was cutting as Secretary of State. I mean, she was pushing Pinchuk's agenda. And you can look at WikiLeaks. I mean, there are cables stating explicitly, Viktor Pinchuk wants to meet with uh, with with Hillary, she he's demanding more support for the Maidan protesters and back in 2014. It's very explicit what he was doing. So I think you're just seeing him kind of take charge on the world stage as these Russian billionaires are winkled out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that that was a kind of remarkable uh that was a remarkable segment.